I'm Sharon, Sharon Lower. You can call me Sherry. I'm from Alice Springs. I'm into art. I love doing art. I do a lot of jobs. I don't have a career. Jesus is my career. He gets me the jobs. So I'm totally laid my life down for him. I'm sold out for him. Um, I do a lot of ministry work, prayer and worship and um, evangelism. Do Bible studies with a group of people. Do children's ministries. Jesus is my everything, he's my lifeline, he's my life source. I can't live without Jesus. Many years ago, I used to get pneumonia every year and I'd be like bedridden for months. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed and my mum would have to look after me like I was a little baby. You know, they had no beds in the hospital so I'd be at home and I was very, very sick. I kept praying and going to church, you know, seek the Lord for healing and because um, I know that Jesus is the healer. The Lord just miraculously just delivered me and set me free from pneumonia. I don't get pneumonia. I haven't had pneumonia in over 13 to 14 years. I've been totally set free from it. I'm very passionate about God's creativity. Like we're sitting here in the Todd Riverbed in Alice Springs and we've got the Gap Hills behind us. And I look at that every day and I can see how Yahweh God has created all of this. Our God is such an artist and he's made this, he's created everything. He's created the land, he's given the land to the First Nations people, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, to be caretakers, custodians, to look after the place. You know, that's one of our responsibilities and I think it's just really awesome. I'm passionate about the destiny of this country. Not only the foundations, what it was founded on, but also where we're at now and the, and the destiny to come and where the Lord's taking Australia prophetically, the great south land of the Holy Spirit. I get very much excited about that and other people's destinies and their plans and futures that I can see, but God shows me the gifts in them and that, and I really believe in that and I, uh, I believe in them as well and I love to encourage that and bring out the best in them. And I, I just want to see the best for not only Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but for our nation in general, for everybody, the plans and purposes that God has for them. We're getting Indigenous, apostolic and prophetic leaders, men and women, to really come forward and start leading this nation the way that God wants to lead the nation. And also with the children, the children don't miss out because it's one spirit, it's one God. And so the children come with us. So we all go together as one big family, just leading in what God wants to do in this nation. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this nation are the voice of Australia, the now voice, the current voice, the prophetic voice because we are a prophetic people. There has to be an allowance for opportunities for us to be able to do that in our local churches, in our local regions, nationally as well. So there needs to be that sort of endorsement and that encouragement and a trust that comes from our non-Indigenous brothers and sisters to allow us to be able to take and present the gospel of Jesus Christ further for his kingdom to come. And, and that's part of the destiny. Some great leaders have come out of this nation. I come from a family of leadership. Charles Perkins, he was, he's my grandfather, that's my mother's uncle. Koiki Mabo, Eddie Mabo, that's my cousin. My uncle, Harold Thomas Jr., that's my mum's cousin. He created the Aboriginal flag. The Torres Strait Islander flag, which was created and designed by Bernard Namick Sr., is my cousin. So we come from a, a family of leadership. But what I can see, what God's doing with Indigenous people in this nation, it's like if they turn to him and surrender to him and do it his way, he will do it for us. We won't have to strive. We won't have to do things the hard way. The way that the world does it, God's going to do it for us. And I saw that recently in Canberra. We were part of a group that went to Canberra to do the Uluru Bark Petition. And it was about what we recognise as traditional marriage between man and woman, because that's always been in our society and also to stand for God's word. And as we walked into Parliament House and you could see the pillars and that, I had such a revelation of what it was like to be Esther coming before the King with the petition on behalf of our people, not only Indigenous, but on behalf of the nation and the favour and God's grace that was on our people on that day. And that's the difference between trying to do things the hard way and win your own strength 
to doing it God's way and in his way with that grace and with that favour. He will pour out the grace, he will pour out the favour if our people go that way. And there's more blessing in it. I just love spending time with God. I just love praying. I love worshiping Him. I love thanking Him. I just love. I just love Him being around. I just love doing things with God for God. Jesus, Yeshua, He's real. He's real. He's a Savior. He's our Lord. He can heal you. He can deliver you. He can set you free. He, he's our protector. He's our provider. He's everything you need when you tap into Him. When you go His way. And he's waiting for his people to turn back to him because he's coming back for a glorious church. And he wants people to be ready, you know? And that's what he's saying, especially to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, you've got to be ready, be ready. No matter where you're at in your life, there's something missing in your life. And the only one that can fill that void, fill that emptiness is Jesus, the Lord Jesus. Because he's, he's loving, he's full of grace, he's full of mercy, and he loves people, he loves everybody. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, you could be a drug addict, you could be a drunk, like you think there's no hope. But where there's no hope, there's always hope. The Lord's the only way out, you know, if you follow him and keep hearing his voice. And he's calling his people now, he's getting them ready. He's calling his bride, he's getting them ready. The body of believers is his bride and we're waiting for the bridegroom to come back and he's preparing his bride. I truly believe that what the Lord is saying to this nation now, and especially to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, is that they need to rise up and stand in the authority that God has given them as apostolic and prophetic leaders to really take on that mantle, that mandate, and really become a voice for this nation. And he's saying to the nation, especially to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord shines on you. And our people really need to rise up. You know, we're glorious ones and we carry the presence of the Lord wherever we go. He's just waiting for us to really rise up. It's already started, but there's more to come. We should be praying all the time because the Bible says, you know, pray without ceasing. But prayer and fasting, you know, it's what changes people's hearts. It's what changes a nation. When Bella Springs region got involved with the 40 days of prayer and fasting, Last year, we noticed a difference, a spiritual difference in the area because people had been praying and fasting. And it really impacts the nation. If you want to be a history maker, a history changer, and the key to revival is to pray and to fast for your nation. If you really love your nation and you really love Jesus and you want to see a change in your nation, in your region and all that, prayer and fasting is the way to go. And the only way that you can change and impact is when our people rise up and stand together in unity as one and stand with our non-Indigenous brothers and sisters and those who've come from other countries that are believers as well, that we have one mind and one spirit. It's time to really rise up and really start moving and making a difference in this nation. Mm -hmm.